The mission of our CalWORKS team is to provide you with help, hope, and opportunity so you can obtain sustained employment. CalWORKS Temporary Assistance provides financial help and employment services to needy families with minor children. The purpose of CalWORKS is to provide you the means to meet the basic needs of your family, including housing, food, and clothing in times of hardship, while helping you to enter or re-enter employment and become self-sufficient. Ashley, a single mom in her early 20s, has a young child. She applied for CalWORKS assistance after an abusive marriage with an alcoholic husband ended. Ashley was approved for CalWORKS and was registered in the Welfare to Work program. She actively participated in her work plan by attending Moore Park College and studying child development. With the help of her college classes, she got a job at a private preschool working with children. While Ashley worked and attended classes, her daughter was taken care of by a daycare provider close to the college. Ashley eventually earned too much money from her job and became ineligible for CalWORKS. She has not reapplied for assistance. Families needing CalWORKS assistance are encouraged to apply at any of the following locations. East County Region, East County Intake and Eligibility Center, 2003 Royal Avenue, Simi Valley. Oxnard Region. Oxnard Intake and Eligibility Center, 1400 Vanguard Drive, Oxnard. Santa Clara Valley Region. Santa Clara Valley Intake and Eligibility Center, 725 East Main Street, Santa Paula. Ventura Region. Ventura Intake and Eligibility Center, 4651 Telephone Road, Suite 100, Ventura. Bus route details are available on the internet at www.vchsa.org. So who can get CalWORKS? Our assistance may be available to you if you are a family with minor children at home who lack the necessary support because of the absence, disability, death, unemployment, or underemployment of one or both parents a pregnant woman with no other children in the third trimester, minor parents, grandparents and certain non-parent relatives caring for the minor children may also be eligible. It is important to remember that CalWORKS assistance is temporary and intended to help families get through hard times and become self-sufficient. Adults in the CalWORKS program are limited to receiving cash benefits for a lifetime total of 60 months. That means, for example, a person who received cash benefits for 10 months and left the program would be eligible for a maximum of 50 more. Our program is here to help people get through hard times and to a place where they can support themselves and their family. We provide help, hope and opportunity and short-term financial support. In order to receive CalWORKS financial assistance, you will need to meet several requirements. Residency. You must provide proof you are a resident of California. You will be asked to provide verification of this, which may include rent receipt, utility bill, or statements from persons you are living with. Resources and property limits. You will need to verify any property owned by you and all adults and children you are requesting aid for. Resources and property can include things like cars, checking and or savings accounts, trust funds even for children, retirement accounts. Income limits. The amount of cash aid you may receive depends on your income and family size. There are limits on the amount of income a family can receive and still qualify for cash aid benefits. Income includes any money received by all adults and children you are requesting aid for. Types of income may include money from a job, unemployment benefits, disability benefits, or cash received from friends or relatives cooperation with county, state, and federal requirements. For cash aid, a county worker may be required by regulation to come to your home to check out your facts and verify the information you have given us, which could include meeting with each family member. You must cooperate with this visit and answer all questions asked of you. State fingerprint and photo imaging. All adult household members must be fingerprinted and photo imaged for cash aid and food stamps. 
the fingerprints and photo images are confidential and can only be used to prevent or prosecute welfare fraud. Failure to complete this process will result in the entire family not being eligible to any benefits. Social Security Number A Social Security Number, or proof you have applied for one, is required for each person as a condition of eligibility. Each Social Security Number will be used to verify whether anyone is receiving income, has bank accounts, or is employed. This information is available to the county via records from other government agencies, Social Security, administration, tax authorities, banks, and or other agencies. Furthermore, each social security number will be matched against law enforcement records for outstanding arrest warrants and to ensure that there is no duplication of services in any county or state. Citizenship Immigration Status You will be asked to provide proof that you are a U.S. citizen, U.S. national, or lawful permanent resident. The information you give us will be verified with U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. You will be asked to sign under the penalty of perjury that each family member for whom you are requesting aid for is a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident. Cooperation with the Department of Child Support Services. This department will collect child support on the family's behalf while you receive cash aid for children. If a parent is absent, you will be asked to cooperate with the Child Support Office to help locate and identify this person. You must tell the county if you receive new information about this person, such as where he or she lives or works. In some cases, paternity tests are necessary to determine the biological parent. Any money that you receive directly from the absent parent must be turned over to the Department of Child Support Services. We realize that some of these requirements may not be easy to meet. However, for our program to help you, we need a partnership with you. We are committed to helping you. You need to commit yourself to help yourself with our support. Karen, a single mother of three children, was on CalWORKs for a year and looked for jobs every week on the internet, at the Job and Career Center, and through friends and family, but had no luck. She was registered in the Welfare to Work program and decided to change her work plan to unpaid work experience. She was placed at an office for her unpaid work experience activity, where for the next nine months she learned new office skills, updated her old skills, and made new connections in her new work environment. She applied for several job openings and was able to talk about her recent work experience at her job interviews. Eventually, she was hired at the school district and discontinued her CalWORKs assistance. Once you have met the eligibility requirements, you have our commitment to help you and your family. In return, you need to show your continuing commitment to help yourself by accepting the following responsibilities. Immunizations are required for children under six years of age you must provide current immunization records for your children or a penalty may be applied to your cash grant. School attendance is required for children six years of age and over. Your school-aged children must be enrolled in school and attending regularly or a penalty may be applied to your cash grant. Once approved for CalWORKs, you will be assigned to a Job and Career Center, JCC, close to where you live. When you leave the intake process, you will be receiving documents to prepare you to actively seek work. Please bring these documents to your first meeting with your employment worker at the Job and Career Center. In order to continue to receive cash assistance, all employable adults are required to work or actively prepare for and seek work. In a single parent household, the parent must work or actively prepare and seek work at least 32 hours of participation a week and a minimum of 140 hours per month. In a two-parent household, the participating parent must work or actively prepare and seek work at least 35 hours a week and a minimum of 152 hours per month. Here is a sample of what you will be expected to do. Actively look for work, work subsidized, unsubsidized, be a work experience intern, receive on-the-job training so you can get a good job, attend school for GED, high school diploma or English as a second language class to prepare you for work. Attend work-related vocational education or a work-study program to prepare you for work. Work in community service and learn marketable skills. 
unless you have a verified reason for not participating, such as being ill, disabled, or caring for a disabled person, you must participate in one or more of these activities to prepare yourself for a job. However, your participation is more than an obligation. It's an important opportunity for you to get on the road to self-sufficiency with the resources of the CalWORKs program assisting you. While working or looking for work, you may get supportive services such as subsidized child care. Payment for child care goes directly to your provider for the care of your child or children while you are working or implementing your work plan. Transportation, for example, mileage reimbursement or bus passes, work or training related services such as books, uniforms, work clothes and equipment, mental health, substance abuse and domestic violence counseling, referrals for other necessary services such as obtaining birth certificates, identification cards and immigration cards. Please let your employment services worker know if you will need any of these services to be successful with your work plan. Job retention. Because we want to support your employment success, when your CalWORKs case is discontinued due to increased earnings, you are still eligible to services such as transportation and child care while you work. This assistance is time limited, so ask your worker about it. Whether you are eligible or not, you have the right to be treated with dignity, respect, and courtesy when you apply for CalWORKs. The Human Services Agency will not discriminate against anyone because of race, color, national origin, political affiliation, religion, age, sex, marital status, or condition of physical or mental disability. Your rights include confidentiality, to have your records kept confidential by the county and state, to ask for an interpreter, to be treated with courtesy and respect, to be interviewed promptly by the county, to be notified in writing when your application is approved, to ask for a state hearing within 90 days of the county's action, to talk with someone from the county or file a formal complaint with the state. This is not an inclusive list of your rights. You should read and review the complete description of your rights and responsibilities, which is included in your orientation packet. We understand that you may have urgent basic needs, and cash aid is an important component of CalWORKs services. CalWORKs cash benefits are provided to eligible persons using one of the two following methods the electronic benefits transfer card or direct deposit into your bank account. The Golden State Advantage card is California's electronic benefit transfer, EBT card. When your application for assistance is approved, your benefits will be issued quickly, safely, and conveniently on this magnetic stripe card through electronic transactions. It is similar to a bank debit card that provides a way for you to spend your cash benefits when your monthly benefits are deposited into your EBT account. You can use your EBT card at any store or ATM that displays the Quest mark throughout California. Your EBT card cannot be used without a personal identification number. A PIN is a four number secret code you use with your EBT card to make sure no one can use your card but you. Every time you use your card, you will need to use your PIN or your card will not work and you will not be able to get your benefits. It is important to learn and remember your PIN and to keep it a secret. Your EBT card can be used for both food and household purchases and to withdraw cash benefits at automated teller and point of sale machines. The day your benefits are deposited into your EBT account is indicated by the last number of your case number. Benefits are available on weekends and holidays. Your balance at the end of the month is added to the next month's benefits. Each card has a 24-hour toll-free telephone access customer service line for reporting lost or stolen EBT cards and obtaining replacement EBT cards and pins. You also have the option to have your benefits directly deposited into your personal checking or savings account rather than have benefits paid through EBT. You must maintain your bank account in order to have benefits deposited. If you receive both cash assistance and food stamps, you can select one of the two options or both for benefit delivery. To select both, Cash benefits will be deposited directly into your bank account and food stamp benefits will be issued through EBT. If you have questions about EBT or direct deposit, call your worker. Every year, 
Thousands of children, women and men in Ventura County receive aid through the Human Services Agency. That's millions of public funds for families who need help now. In order to ensure that those who are eligible are in genuine need, we constantly review cases for prevention and detection of fraud. Welfare fraud is a serious crime. Penalties range from criminal prosecution, fines, restitution, community service, periods of disqualification from the cash aid and food stamp program, jail, and prison time. Fraud is any intentional act which causes an individual to receive benefits to which they are not entitled. Some examples of this are providing false or incomplete information to the Human Services Agency, failing to report changes, submitting a false or fraudulent document to the Human Services Agency in order to get benefits, transferring, hiding, or giving away assets in order to receive cash assistance benefits. If false statements are made or all facts or situations are not reported, this can lead to repayment of benefits and criminal or civil action. Penalty of perjury must be signed on most forms for cash aid declaring all assets, sources of income, persons residing in the home, and their contributions to the home. For example, Sally is a single mother with two children and no income and no assets. She applied for benefits and met the eligibility criteria and was approved. After a few months, she found a job that pays her cash under the table as a receptionist. She also received a new car as a gift from her father, and the father of the children moved back into the home. Knowing that reporting these changes could affect her benefits, she conceals them from the Human Service Agency. In doing this, Sally is committing fraud. If you are unsure, report it anyway. Individuals who intentionally misrepresent, conceal, or withhold facts in order to receive CalBRICS funds they're not entitled to can be legally prosecuted and be charged with committing a felony if more than $400 is paid in benefits. You can also be disqualified from receiving benefits when you receive more cash aid than you were eligible to. It creates an overpayment of benefits and you will need to pay it back even if it is determined that the county made an error. Fraud and abuse of public programs affects all of us. Everyone should take the responsibility to report fraud and abuse. Together, we can ensure taxpayer money is used for people who really need the help. To remain in the CalBRICS program, you are required to report information to your worker on the eligibility status report. The deadline to turn in the report to your worker is the 5th of the month. You and your family may benefit by reporting any changes immediately to your worker over the phone. When the eligibility status report is not provided, your benefits will be terminated. If you provide an incomplete report or fail to attach required proof, your benefits will be delayed, changed, or stopped. Incomplete or late reports cause more work for you and your worker. Turn it in on time. A late report will result in benefits you are not eligible to and you will have to pay it back. All changes with your family situation need to be reported on the eligibility status report. You need to report when a household member leaves the home or moves in, when there is a change in your property such as purchase or sale of a vehicle, or when there is a change in your income whether it be due to employment, social security, workers comp, state disability, unemployment, tax refunds, loans, or any other source. You must also report changes in your marital status. You can also use the eligibility status report to make a request to close your CalWORKs case. There are some changes that must be reported to your caseworker within 10 days. These include when your family income exceeds the level for financial eligibility, you have a change of address, or someone in your family has a drug felony conviction, becomes a fleeing felon, or is in violation of probation or parole. If you are in doubt as to when and if you should report something, contact your caseworker. Once your basic needs have been met with CalWORKs help, our attention expands to offer you hope for a brighter future through full-time employment. After your application for CalWORKs has been approved, you will be assigned a cash worker at one of the following job and career centers. East County Region, East County Job and Career Center, 980 Enchanted Way, Simi Valley. Thousand Oaks Job and Career Center, 1423 East Thousand Oaks Boulevard, Thousand Oaks. Oxnard College Job and Career Center, 4000 South Rose Avenue, North Building, Oxnard. West Oxnard Job and Career Center, 635 
South Ventura Road, Oxnard. Oxnard Job and Career Center, 1400 Vanguard Drive, Oxnard. Santa Clara Valley Region. Santa Clara Valley Job and Career Center, 725 East Main Street, Santa Paula. Fillmore Job and Career Center, 828 Ventura Street, Suite 210, Fillmore. Ventura Region. Ventura Job and Career Center, 4651 Telephone Road, Suite 200, Ventura. The Job and Career Centers offer a variety of services to assist job seekers, students, and employers. These services are free and are available to anyone seeking employment, whether or not they are approved for CalWORKs benefits. The services provided include computers with internet access, newspapers, phones, printers, fax, and copy machines. Federal, state, and local job listings. Resume templates and paper, envelopes, typing tests and certificates, and a library of employment-related books and videos. The Job and Career Centers also offer free career workshops every month. Most Job and Career Centers have on-site childcare that can be accessed while you are there looking for employment or meeting with your worker. Reporting your income is important because you can work and get cash aid at the same time. Employment is the goal of CalWORKs. You must report the money you make. Working is beneficial to you and your family. You will improve your family's quality of life by bringing more money into your home. You will gain valuable opportunities and experience and make connections with other people in the world of work, which could lead you to a better job and open other doors for you. Here's why work pays. When you work, you will receive your take-home pay plus a reduced cash aid amount. Your cash aid will be reduced by approximately half the gross amount of the money you earned, so you will always receive more money when working. For example, if you earned $1,000 gross, we would calculate the amount to deduct from your cash aid by applying an automatic deduction of $225 from that $1,000, which makes $775 and then halving back, which gives a total deduction of $387 from your cash aid. So if you were receiving $800 of cash aid before you were working, you would still receive $413 of cash aid while working, plus the take-home pay you earned from your job, which would be approximately $750 after tax and other deductions. This means your monthly family income would be about $1,000 $160, a lot more than the $800 cash aid you would have received if not working. Keep in mind, this is only an example and exact figures are different for each situation. In addition, while you are working, CalWORKs pays for your child care and work-related needs such as transportation, work clothes, and equipment. Your employment plan may also include work-related education or training, which will increase your earnings over your lifetime as well. Since the more educational qualifications and training you have, the more you can earn. You may also be placed as an intern with a business to learn on-the-job skills that will improve your chances of getting and keeping a good job. CalWORKs is an opportunity for you to learn and earn more so you can support your family. Paul and David each have a child from a previous relationship and two together. Their combined family is six. The family applied for CalWORKs because David had lost his job and Paula was staying home to care for the four children. While on aid, David actively participated in his work plan and after six months, he got a job at the mall working as security. His job was part-time and was an increase in his family's income. And even though David started working, his employment income did not make his family ineligible for CalWORKs. As an additional activity to his work plan, David went to school part-time to learn new skills and attain a short-term certificate. During this time, Paula was also enrolled in the Welfare to Work program, and she actively participated in unpaid work experience. She gained new employment skills through her work experience activity that lasted 11 months. Paula and David received subsidized childcare while they both actively participated in their work plan. With Paula's updated resume, she found a job at a restaurant. They were able to make ends meet with the CalWORKs assistant, David's part-time job, 
Paula's new job and the money they save by not having to pay for childcare or bus transportation to get to school and their work site. The family remained on aid for six more months, and during that time, they were able to use the money they saved from their jobs to purchase a used car. Because they got off of aid due to their ability to support their family with income from their jobs, Paul and Dave still remain eligible to continue receiving subsidized childcare and transportation assistance for a period of time after their CalWORKs case is discontinued. In addition, they also continue to receive food stamps and Medi-Cal benefits for their family. The overall goal of the CalWORKs program is to prepare you to get a job to support your family. The Welfare to Work program is designed to assist you by providing services, support and guidance which will help you attain your employment goals and lead to full-time employment. Participation on the Welfare to Work program is required for all employable adults receiving cash aid. In addition to your cash aid worker, you will be assigned an employment services worker at the Job and Career Center with whom you will work with to develop your customized Welfare to Work plan. There are three categories in this program. Mandatory, means you must actively seek and obtain work. Volunteers, means you are not required to participate but can volunteer to take advantage of the opportunities and help that is available. Exempt, means you are excused from participating for a certain period of time. As previously stated, every participant in the Welfare to Work program must work actively seek work and or be in training or in school to obtain work-related skills for at least 32 hours a week and a minimum of 140 hours per month if you're a single parent household or at least 35 hours a week and minimum of 152 hours per month if you're a two-parent household. In order to continue cash aid you must actively implement your work plan every day. You will have your own work plan with job search and employment oriented activities that you must work on every day. Your work plan may include appraisal, assessment of your education, work history, skills, etc. This is the initial interview with your employment services worker. At appraisal, you'll discuss your background, employment history, education, family situation, and employment goals to determine what services and activities you will need to help you reach your goal of employment, job search and job readiness, up to four weeks. Following appraisal, most participants engage in active job search and job readiness so they can immediately get a job. Job search activities are monitored by your employment services worker and include attendance at job readiness workshops where you will receive tips on interviewing, appropriate work attire, resume writing, and using the internet for job search so you can obtain employment unsubsidized employment, subsidized employment, employment in which a portion of your wage is paid through a grant subsidy, paid on the job training, OJT, paid training that takes place with an employer in the public or private sector for a limited period of time. As a participant, you receive training directly from the employer. The employer can be partially reimbursed for training a CalWORKs participant and is expected at the end of the training period to keep you as an employee. Potential OJT participants are screened and evaluated to determine if they meet the minimum criteria for this employment activity. Unpaid work experience, WEX, up to 12 months. If you have limited work history, unpaid training in the public or private sector can provide you with basic job skills or enhance your existing job skills to help you get a job. Adult Basic Education, GED, High School Diploma, ESL. Participate in an educational activity that helps increase your ability to obtain employment, such as the need to learn English as a second language or obtain a high school diploma or GED. Vocational education, up to 12 months. Receive specific vocational skills training and education in a classroom setting for an in-demand short-term occupation to help you get a better job. Training is provided by community colleges and or private trade schools. Participants must demonstrate the ability to complete the training course successfully and is limited to 12 months. Self-initiated program, SIP. If at the time of your appraisal appointment with your employment services worker, you are enrolled or have started an educational or training program that will help you become employed, this can count as your activity. In order to continue in a SIP, you must continue to make good progress toward a degree or certificate that leads to employment. 
mental health, substance abuse, and domestic violence services to reduce barriers to employment, participants are provided with a variety of supportive services including drug and alcohol, mental health, and domestic abuse services. If you feel you need any of these services that can help, please let your worker know and a referral will be made. Remember, everything you share with a counselor is confidential. In addition to CalWORK's cash aid and employment services, we are connected to a variety of organizations and resources to support you and your family when you go to work or prepare to enter the workforce. These resources are here to help you. Child Development Resources, CDR, partner on site at JCCs. Behavioral Health Department, partner on site at most JCCs. Department of Child Support Services, DCSS. Veterans Services, CalLearn. Workforce Investment, WIA. Children and Family Services, CFS. Department of Rehabilitation, Women, Infants and Children, WIC. Domestic Violence, Family Planning, Child Health and Disability Prevention, CHDP. If you don't work on your work plan every day, you will risk having less money for your family every month. Participants that do not comply with the program requirements by, for example, not attending scheduled appointments with their employment services worker, quitting a job, refusing to accept a job offer, or not implementing the work plan as agreed, may be penalized with a sanction. A sanction means that you will lose a portion of your cash assistance. The consequences of a sanction are many. For example, you will have your grant amount reduced. You will lose money for your family and lose supportive services such as transportation and work-related assistance. You could also lose control of your benefits and have your cash assistance go directly to a third party that will take over and pay your bills directly. For example, to pay your landlord or utility bills, this is called vendor payment. It is always best to talk with your employment services worker and avoid a sanction. You will have the opportunity to discuss and agree upon how a sanction can be avoided. Our staff is here to assist you in obtaining and retaining employment so you and your family will have a more secure future. As a Welfare to Work participant, CalWORKS will provide you with the support you need to become successful in obtaining employment and achieving self-sufficiency. You, in turn, must accept your responsibilities as an active partner with CalWORKS. To take advantage of the work support opportunities that are provided in the program, you will need to keep all scheduled appointments with the county, sign a work plan, actively implement your work plan every day, look for work, accept a job, keep the job and not quit or lower your earnings. Provide a monthly status report that verifies that you are implementing your work plan by the fifth of each month as described in your work plan. Acceptable verification includes check stubs and school attendance. Request subsidized childcare if you will need it. Choose and arrange for supportive services. Tell your worker of any changes that may affect your ability to implement your work plan. This is not an inclusive list of your rights. You should read and review the complete description of your rights and responsibilities, which is included in your orientation packet. Along with those responsibilities come your rights as a Welfare to Work participant. If you are actively implementing your work plan every day, you have the right to receive a referral to places that offer personal counseling, receive direction and support from the county staff, receive payment for childcare, transportation, and work and training related expenses, change your mind about the activities you agreed to in your work plan, explain the reason if you fail to implement the plan you agreed to, have a second chance to implement your work plan, ask for legal advice at any time, protest any county action you do not agree with or understand. If you will exercise your rights and responsibilities fully, CalWORKS will provide help, hope, and the opportunity of self-sufficiency through employment. Michelle is a single mother of three children, a newborn, three-year-old, and five-year-old. She was living with the father of her newborn until he went to jail for drug use and sales. Michelle and her children became homeless, and she applied for CalWORKS and homeless assistance. She was approved for assistance and now has an apartment for herself and her children. Michelle met with her employment services worker who provided her referrals to behavioral health for counseling services. 
She also actively participated in career workshops offered at the Job and Career Centers. With her background in medical assisting, she applied for a job at a local hospital. She was hired at the hospital and received assistance from her employment services worker to purchase her scrubs for work and obtain a referral for subsidized childcare services while she works. The most important message is that CalWORKS is about helping you help yourself. Our goal is to provide you with help, hope, and the opportunity to obtain sustained employment and support your family through employment. CalWORKS Behavioral Health provides voluntary and confidential mental health and substance abuse treatment services to support you in reaching self-sufficiency. Behavioral health services are offered to help you increase the emotional strength and stamina you may need to reach your potential and to fully participate in your welfare to work activities. CalLearn is a statewide mandatory program for pregnant and parenting teens under the age of 19 years, both moms and dads who receive CalWORKS and have not obtained a high school degree or its equivalent. The goal of the program is to help these teens overcome the barriers to completing their secondary level education by providing them with a combination of intensive case management, supportive services, and financial inducements. The program rewards good school performance and high school graduation with bonuses and penalizes bad school performance or non-attendance with sanctions. CalLearn wants to eliminate all barriers to school attendance and can also cover other necessary expenses. CalLearn is administered through the Public Health Adolescent Family Life Program. Each teen is assigned a case manager who works with them one-to-one -to, -one to provide comprehensive case management services in a home visitation model. The CalLearn program provides a wide range of support to help meet the challenges young parents face and works to enhance the psychosocial, physical, economic, and educational well-being for teen parents and their children. The CalWORKS Child Care Programs helps families access immediate, quality, and affordable child care as they move through their welfare to work activities towards employment and self-sufficiency. It promotes parental choice and ensures that families have child care that is stable enough to move off cash assistance. Child Development Resources' mission is to provide a foundation to build promising futures for children. CDR collaborates with parents and the community to deliver programs that enrich lives. For more information about CDR and our many programs and services, please visit our website at www.cdrb.org. Child Support Services receives referrals from the Human Services Agency when a family applies for CalWORKS or Medi-Cal. We are required by law to open a case and establish an order for child support, medical support, and paternity. After we open your case, we will send you documents which need to be completed and returned within a given time frame. Your cash aid grant may be reduced if you fail to comply. For further information on our services, please call 866-901-3212 or visit our website at childsupport.countyofventura.org. The Ventura County Veterans Service Office was established to provide assistance to veterans, their dependents, and survivors in obtaining benefits from federal, state, and local agencies. If you are a veteran, or a spouse, widow, or dependent of a veteran, please contact your CalWORKS case manager. He or she will assist you in connecting with a veterans claims officer. If you have friends or extended family that are veterans, be sure to let them know about our services. In many cases, a veterans claims officer is available to meet clients at your local job and career center. Again, your CalWORKS case manager can provide you with contact information for the Veterans Services offices. We look forward to serving you. The Workforce Investment Board of Ventura County provides valuable support for job seekers through the job and career centers and other organizations. Adults and young people have easy access to free programs and services. Whether you need to find a job, upgrade your skills, make a career transition, or re-enter the workforce, be sure to ask how we can help. For more information, visit www.wib.ventura.org.